Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have three main systems that we're watching. First of all, Hurricane Katia moving up between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda as forecast will eventually be moving off to the northeast as a recurving storm that is going to miss land, one of the better tracks that we can have in the western Atlantic for a track that avoids land nearly completely and will be no danger to anyone except for rip currents and high tides along the eastern seaboard and waves for Bermuda as well. There are some indications, I saw some tracks yesterday that took this as a strong extratropical cyclone up into the Europe area and England and areas around there. That might be something cool to watch for them, but right now in the immediate future is no real threat to land and will be passing well south of Canada on its way out here. Next, we get to talk about the son of Lee, named Nate here, and true to his lineage, being the baby that he is, he has not strengthened much and is a lot weaker than Lee was during his first couple of days of life, and we can, this is what I was, this is, it's a dry storm. This is a dry storm, and yesterday the Hurricane Center said that this dry air up here, this extremely dry air, was not affecting Nate. I never bought it. I still do not. You can see that the cloud deck up here, see the type of clouds that we have? This is indicative of very cold air by Gulf of Mexico standards in the middle of the summer. This is very cold air that is getting pumped directly into the storm via his northwesterly inflow and you can see that the convection is confined to a tiny blob right here where the vorticity is greatest and then we have this low level cloud deck on the eastern side of the system which indicates an inversion layer of some sorts in the lower levels and thus a stable atmosphere where convection is not popping through. It's like a cap that you guys are used to talking about with land-based thunderstorms in the lower 48. So this is a dry storm. This is in in training a lot of dry air has not strengthened at all since yesterday. I don't think they've sent in a recon plane yet, but they will probably send in one later and we'll get to see whether the pressure has risen with this. A slow, slow drift to the northeast is occurring right now. Very slow, not moving a whole lot right now, and we'll probably move off in this direction with a slow movement for the rest of today. Now here's the track models for Nate in here, and we can see that the main bunch of the models is actually implying a track into northern Mexico here, actually north of the NHC forecast track, which still curves into Mexico. We have a batch down here and a batch up here towards the northern Gulf Coast. Now I'm going to tell you guys something. I really don't like what I did yesterday. What happened is two to three days ago, I was definitely in the camp of having this come towards the North Gulf Coast like this current batch of models has it. And then yesterday, what happened is the great majority of the models, as they still are, showed this going into Mexico instead. And this made me uneasy about my forecast. And this is something that can happen to forecasters as they start it's just a way for them to cover themselves when they say, well, let's wait and see in a couple of days when the track is more certain and I feel more 50-50 about where this is going to go. Let's wait and see. Wait and see is just a way to cover ourselves as forecasters when we're not sure about something and something comes along to mess up our harmony with what we figured was going to happen and then the computers disagree. And it's uneasy to see that, but I don't want to do that. I want to be able to make a forecast, give reasons for it, and then stick to it. There are times when we need to say, let's wait and see, but not when we have a storm that's developed already in the Gulf of Mexico. That's unexcusable. We're going to make a forecast here, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Hopefully you guys will forgive me if that happens. But right now I'm going to give you three good reasons on why I think this will move towards the north Gulf Coast instead of moving west. And reason number one is that if we look at the buoys from the Caribbean, the western and central Caribbean, we see that pressures have been rising for the last couple of days. And if pressures are rising, we're implying that there is more ridging in here, implying a steering flow off to the north, to the east, and over Nate, which is going to perhaps help propel him a little bit northeastward today, perhaps off into the waters northwest of the Yucatan by tonight. And we're going to be having that motion starting off, and then we have to decide whether it's going to curve or whether it's going to continue. So if we look at reason number two here. This is the Canadian Ensemble 72 hours out and 500 millibar heights. What this is showing us is all these blue numbers and letters in here are actually showing the ensemble member locations for high pressure centers. And we can see that the ensemble has a, a, a large cluster of them over Florida and the Florida Straits in three days. This implies a fairly potent mid-level ridge 
over this area, which implies a fairly strong northerly flow in the Gulf of Mexico, stronger than the southerly flow that would be occurring here due to a weaker high over Mexico. So in other words, I think the northerly flow here looks dominant compared to the southerly flow and should help to bring Nate northward over the Gulf of Mexico after he has a couple of days to sit, moving fairly slowly. Reason number three is that if we go over to the water vapor imagery for the United States, I don't know if you can see this real well, but if you look down near the NOAA logo in the southwest corner of the image, notice there's a clockwise flow of clouds right in here. And this is actually the Texas Death Heat Ridge retreating down to the south here, which is why it's so cold up over the south right now. But it's squished down over here. So what we have to ask ourselves is right now, if the high were to remain right here, a track directly towards it into northern Mexico isn't going to make very much sense for Nate. So what we need is for the high to move off over here more over Texas to allow Nate to curve to the west south of it into Mexico. The question is does it make sense for the high to move out of the way over here and allow Nate to do that? The answer I think is no because you can see Lee's old upper low here backing back to the west and it's going to be remaining entrenched over the center of the country for the next couple of days keeping the Texas Ridge down over Mexico for a little while, which means that the only way I think we're going to see a move into Mexico is if Nate decides to dive southwest, still in the Bay of Campeche, as opposed to up here into northern Mexico. And unfortunately, this means that the main track that the models, the model consensus currently has a track like that towards northern Mexico. And this would be the track that could bring rain to South Texas. And here I am bashing it. I swear I don't have a grudge against you guys in Texas. I'm rooting for your rainfall. I really am. But at this point, I think that we're more likely to see either this or this as opposed to the compromise in between that the models are currently showing. So we're going to have to watch for that. These models are very slow, so it takes a while for them to get in here. So if this, if, if Nate is actually sitting around in here in five to six days, then maybe we can talk about this. But if the short-term track turns out the way I think it will, we're not going to see this track, unfortunately. But we'll, we'll be hoping for Texas, see if you get some rain in there. But right now, I think this move up into this trough as this ridge will be staying off to the south and the steering flow should propel this north towards the north Gulf Coast. Similar target areas to Lee, Louisiana to the Alabama coast, maybe the western Florida panhandle in here. Probably a straight north-northeast track towards the general direction of the Mississippi River in here is where I think this is going to end up heading. This is the European from last night still showing a track into northern Mexico and this is a very respectable model so despite my disagreements with it right now you can see that it's still a possibility and this is why Texas can still hope for some rain because this is still on the table. If you've got models showing a possibility then it's still on the table and we can see this on here still going west and we will see what happens in here the European actually lifts the trough out Lee's trough is actually gone by day five here which is a little bit sooner than some of the other models so we'll see how this turns out we can see the European also bringing Maria up northeast of the Bahamas finally starting to lose that Caribbean solution that I disagreed with and now it's going up with the other models taking Maria out and if we look at Maria right now she doesn't look as great as she did yesterday and we can see the low level center is actually naked right now and it left the old batch of convection behind is trying to fire some more near its center today but there is some dry air associated with it and there is some wind shear more so than yesterday yesterday we had a nice cirrus cloud shield in here and some of this wind shear is because of this upper low northwest of Maria and the other part of it is that there's some strong trade winds that I mentioned yesterday coming ahead of Maria and moving into Cadia as inflow. This is actually shearing the system a little bit because as the center gains latitude and enters this faster flow it starts getting pulled out from underneath the convection that it was with and thus that's why it left this behind. This low level center got pulled out from underneath. It got yanked out and that is a form of wind shear as well when the low level trade winds are very strong. So right now the storm hasn't really strengthened, hasn't weakened terribly if she has weakened significantly, but she probably will maintain fairly uh, light weak to moderate tropical storm intensity, perhaps a little bit stronger, 50 to 60 miles per hour in the Leeward Antilles and then Puerto Rico. The track will likely be fairly close to Puerto Rico here and we can see the models. I think I threw these up here. Yeah, I did. Let's zoom out a little bit. You can see the track moves generally over Puerto Rico now on the consensus and then on its way northwest I think agreeing in the general direction of where I think this is going to go just northeast of the Bahamas and then an eventual curve out east of the United States um, 
there's still it's it's impossible to rule out right now that this could have could stay weak and try to threaten the United States like Irene, but I do think this will be a track in general, mirroring Katya in her late recurvature, but west of her to begin with, and will probably be east of the United States right now. That doesn't mean don't keep an eye on her in the Bahamas. The track's going to be very close here. Same deal for Hispaniola. Keep an eye on this storm. I do think, though, that it has to be rescued by a big long wave trough from Canada, which means that eventually we are going to have to get a big trough over the eastern seaboard sometime during the next week, which which means that Maria is not going to want to move into the eastern seaboard in this particular phase of the pattern, and she will probably curve out due to this trough like Katia did. Now, later on, we're going to have threats from the south. This is day 13, and again, during the third week of September, between September 15th and 25th, I think we're going to see activity in the northwestern Caribbean, southern Gulf, or the Bahamas area, and you can see the Canadian Ensemble seeing low pressure in the southern Gulf and northwestern Caribbean in 13 days on the 21st, right in the middle of my window. So this is something that I think we're going to see the models start picking up on more, and we're going to see activity in this area that could easily threaten the Caribbean islands and the United States as it would likely be drawn north somewhere into this area during the third week of September. I've been talking about this for a while now. We'll see if that verifies. This may be the next big threat after we get rid of Maria, hopefully after a grazing weak blow to the islands, not too much damage, and then hopefully it just a curve right out like Katia without much much to worry about there. And then Nate is a guaranteed land threat in the Gulf, so we will be watching him very closely for Mexico and for possibly the North Gulf Coast in a few days. And I forgot to mention that Nate's intensity should stay fairly weak due to all this dry air as he moves north because this mid-level flow coming down from Lee's cutoff upper low over Texas is going to be staying in place, bringing dry air into Nate's personal space for the next several days, and I don't really see how he's going to strengthen above a moderate tropical storm as he moves through the Gulf of Mexico. So the Hurricane Center's forecast for hurricane intensity in the Gulf, I don't buy that either. So we'll see what happens here. We'll see what happens with Nate. Hopefully he remains weak in here and doesn't bring too much more rain to these folks that already got flooded by Lee. And if he moves into Mexico, hopefully he won't be too strong there either. I don't think he will. I think he'll be fairly weakened there. So my track is into the central gulf as a weak to moderate tropical storm, and we will see how that goes. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.